Hey, go getters! Welcome back to another episode of the Pursuit Sunday Sit Down Live Edition. We go live every week to give you the big ideas you need to transform yourself, your life, and your impact of your business. So, hey, welcome to the show. My name is Patrick. I'm Katie. Listen, whether you're watching live or you're watching on our somewhere over there, our companion podcast, we're just lucky and glad to have you here. Uh, our topic today is something that is a bit near and dear to us as parents we watch a lot of films what kind of films oh disney movies oh disney oh, they're on repeat constantly yes and uh we, we've watched them enough to, <laughs> we've watched them so often that we've learned to put them in our subconscious we know them all by heart but we know all the major life lessons that each one of these films has to offer so we'll be going back and forth we'll be exploring some of these major lessons and hopefully this is not just, I mean, Disney Pixar is just the, the medium in mm -hmm. which we're telling this. But what we're really hoping you guys get out of today is just some ideas that will just find you at the right time to not just impact the rest of your day, but the rest of your week, your month. I'm excited for this. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Well, it's kind of cool because, you know, you watch these movies and you're like, okay, another cartoon, whatever, whatever. But... It's it's kind of cool to know that there is a lot of thought that goes into making these movies. Mm -hmm. So I really like that. But and can I just say, there's been times where I've seen like parts of a movie over and over and over again and not seen the whole thing. <laughs> For all of these, though, I would call myself you know medium to expert level. Medium to expert level. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would I would say that I might be a super ultra expert at that's this point. That's probably true. I could probably do a Broadway show where I just monologue <laughs> beginning to end all these films. We've watched them in our house repeat so many times. Um, or vicariously watching. All right, so let's get let's get right into this because this is gonna be our five major life lessons. Now make sure you stay until the end because we have three bonus ones that we're only gonna reveal at the very end. But let's begin here with one of the, the major ones, Aladdin. I mean, how could you forget Aladdin. It's it from is, our childhood. It's from our child, our childhood, maybe <laughs> your childhood. But Aladdin That's is one of those those films that um, really had a huge impact. But it was such a great message, such great characters. And if you again, this is just a little preface for each one of these. We're not going to do any spoilers in case you haven't seen them. But just here's a general gist of Aladdin. Um, Agrabah, long time ago in the past. Genies, the land of the desert. I mean, who hasn't seen Aladdin? I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's some new folks showing us here who have not seen it. Pause the pause this. Go watch it. <laughs> Go watch it. Come back. You deserve it. Uh, Robin Williams, classic, classic film. But more than that, it really is a human story that I think we can all connect to of a person in a situation that they don't feel very proud of. And one of the things that we want to make sure we highlight today is each one of these are fundamentally human stories. So as you're watching these, as you're watching us live and you go back and rethink on these films, they really touch on something core that makes us human. And that's really what we're extracting these life lessons about today. So as we look at Aladdin um, and you have two stories being juxtaposed here, just to kind of set the scene, you have a princess stuck in a castle who's miserable with her kind of stuckness in life. All she wants to do is break free of her constraints and get out there and live the life she wants to. Mm -hmm. And then you have Aladdin uh, who's also feeling the same, stuck in a life, doesn't want to be. And funny enough, they're both trying to be someone that they're not and pretend they're someone that they're not in order to feel some sense of freedom from these shackles and constraints in which they live in. And of course, all of that, I'm gonna nerd out on you guys for a second, all of that is also involving this genie who has literal shackles and he's imprisoned by his, um, I don't wanna say this is not his vow, but the curse or whatever he has to be bound to give wishes to people. So mm -hmm. that's kind yeah, of that's, the setting. Yeah, that's interesting. Three people locked in a place that they don't wanna be. Locked in a place mm -hmm. they don't wanna and be. And they wanna be something else. And they, can you relate? Can you relate to this uh, theme or idea? So here's, we're gonna call this, here's the, the light, major life lesson uh, given actually by Genie was kind of the curtain pull on this one. So the major life lesson from Aladdin, our first one is be yourself. This was the message that Genie gave to Aladdin. The whole movie was, man, just, just do you, just be you. Stop trying to pretend you're someone you're not. They're, the world's gonna love you. She's gonna love you if you're just willing to have the courage to be 
yourself. Mm -hmm. So what are what are your thoughts on Well, this then we idea? see an interesting character twist at the end Ooh, yes. with Aladdin when he, you know, he's like, "Genie, I'm going to give you my third wish and I'm going to set you free." And then he he doesn't, right? We are, Sorry, we are going spoiler. into spoiler. We just entered spoiler territory. Well, you territory. said I told you to pause it. Now you're back. Okay, wait, well, hey. And so he, he does like a, he gets tested in his character, which mm -hmm. is also a really interesting part of the story. And then he doesn't set the genie free and where he had pro he has promised to. And so he really does end up, I think, questioning like, I I, I am not who I thought I was. But then, you know, he takes it, he takes it back at the end and everything turns out great. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it happens. I mean, that also that's also comes from a place of integrity. I think probably another yeah. last week's, you know, you 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 say you're gonna do stuff, you say you these, but are you living what you preach? And in the end, yeah. he does be himself. He does be him be himself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's number one. By the way, if we're missing any of the ones that personally, uh, any Disney Pixar film, we can't possibly cover them all today. But if there's one that we just don't cover, like, oh, Patrick, Katie, what about this one? Jump right in the comments. You know what to do. And while you're there in the comments, hey, if one of the greatest ways you can say thank you for all the content, right there, hit that like button. We like likes. Join us, subscribe to us, and hit that bell if you're on YouTube so you never miss a beat when we go live. We want to make sure you guys are here joining us for all these incredible things. All right, so let's go right into number two. We've covered Aladdin. Oh, here we go. Gosh, which one's it going to be? How about Inside Out? This is one of my favorite films about what's going on inside our noggins, mm -hmm. all the crazy stuff going on in Especially there. Especially about kids. Yeah, you know, and the and challenges of growing up, and I think we can all relate to this one. Yeah, I had, I was thinking about this movie the other day when Emily was... She was having some like beautiful life experience. She was uh, Emily's our daughter. In case yes, you're like, who the heck is Emily? Two and a half. Well, she's almost three, and she's having this beautiful experience, and she's singing, and everyone loves her, and she feels so comfortable and so confident mm. and so loved. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a core memory. <laughs> I <laughs> hope. <laughs> and because you know, because we know between the ages of zero and seven, these kids get mm. all their their programming about you know what it means to be. A person and how to react to the relationships in your life so that's why this movie is so interesting because it's kind of about that without actually saying you know oh, like, it is that's what it's about and i like that idea of the core memory because i think as it, if you guys are watching and your parents i mean you guys know the, the weight that we carry in our heart and our soul pretty much every single day like am i messing up my kids am i giving them the the life experience going to make them look back on their life and go I felt loved, I felt appreciated, my voice was hurt, like all those things. And we go through those experiences as parents and I think the one of the things that this movie points to is how much we all go through, but not just on the external sense, which is really what this movie is about, but the on the inside, what's going on on the inside. And you and I talk a lot about mm -hmm. on this show and other mediums about kind of navigating your own inner world. So uh, without, the, without the reveal, if I could just pull you here, I'm gonna do a little test here. Uh, what do you, what would you say the message of Inside Out is about? If you had to put it in a, a sentence. Well, you even showed me the lesson. No, did you? Oh, before. sorry, you have ironclad memory. But I memory. sort of, I but I sort you. of forgot what it was. There but, you go. Okay, so the thing that sticks out to me the most about yeah. Inside Out, and whether this is right or not, it's that. <clears throat> You know, Joy spends all this time trying to make sadness go away and trying yes. to make sadness be quiet. Yes. But then at, you you learn at the end that without sadness, there is no joy. And, you know, joy can also bring sadness. And it's like very beautiful. But so it's just a balance of, I want to say, like, loving all the parts of yourself. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what did you, did I get it right? I think you were very close. <laughs> and I love that you had that. I don't want to say a couple more things, but yes, the, the major lesson of Inside Out, according to Disney Pixar, by the way, source material, where we're getting these things, the language might be a little different, but basically we, we found out what they actually meant. Here's what it's about. Every emotion deserves a place in our heart. And when we spend okay. all this energy trying to, to kick out the feelings that we don't want or blockade ourselves, well, I don't like anger, so I'm going to spend my life never feeling angry. I'm going to dodge it, avoid it, distract myself from it, or I don't like sadness. So I build up this allergy to sadness. And I've got, it's like, let's just, I want to go deep into this one for a second because I think what's interesting on a psychological level, what's happening to us, the more we build barriers, the, the kind of the, the walls that we erect around ourselves to protect ourselves from the feelings that we don't like, 
end up being the prison walls in which we live. Mm-hmm. And that's why we feel so stuck all the time. So one of the major lessons we can learn from this movie Inside Out is fi- is building a sense of peace within all of the beautiful uh, types of emotions we feel and ha- developing kind of an open door policy to allowing these emotions in that we spend so much energy blockading. Yeah. What are your What are your thoughts on that? Well, I was I was kind of posting about this on my Instagram the l- yeah. last couple of days, yeah. and it the idea that I was contemplating this week was, um, what do we What are some of the things that we do to not feel a feeling? Mm. Now, I don't want to feel this feeling, and what am I going to do? Whether it's conscious or not, people do all kinds of different things. Mm-hmm. So in this case, I was thinking of a friend who um, developed sort of a shopping addiction and. That sounds kind of like, oh, a shopping addiction. You know, how weird is that? But really what it was, it can be equivalent to a drinking addiction almost. Mm -hmm. Or like, Mm -hmm. what's the thing that I'm doing to make me not feel the feeling that I don't want to feel? So in this case, this person shopped and shopped and shopped and filled her house with stuff. So, you Mm -hmm. know, it was very interesting. And what what am I doing to not feel the feeling? Yeah, that's, I think, at the end of the day, where I think a lot of us find ourselves. So if that's you and that's you're like, oh my gosh, Patrick, hey, you're talking about me. Uh, maybe this is the video you needed to see today. So the major lesson here from the movie Inside Out, the major transformative life lesson is make room for all the feelings. And, and curious enough, here's what happens when you stop blocking yourself from the feelings you're trying to feel. What happens inside of you? is something shifts, something transforms. And when you develop this, you might call it a mindfulness or an openness to anger and openness to sadness. I know it sounds like crazy wisdom, but the more you allow these feelings to be inside of you and allow their wisdom to shine through, the more free and joyful you're going to feel. Um, one, of my, one of my great teachers, uh, Pema Children, talks a lot about this, about accessing the space and not not kind of, um, not running from these things and this paradoxical teaching of going into the places that scare you. And But that that is, that movement is called courage. And as we do these things more and more, we develop kind of spiritual muscles or spiritual courage. Uh, she calls it spiritual warriorship, which then allows us to move through life with more grace and more openness and more freedom. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's, I mean, that's a lot from just one film. And just to take it, you know, yeah. a little bit farther, um, a couple episodes ago, we were, I was talking about that book, Dark Side of the Light Chasers. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so our fears and those things we don't like about ourselves, our sadness or our fear or our anger. Um, was there another one? Joy? Yeah. No, joy. And then what's, what's the other one? Uh, uh, disgust. Oh yeah. Disgust. Yeah, disgust. Um, those are all, they all live in our shadow. Mm-hmm. But if we can look at that part of ourselves and say, how does that serve me? Like, actually, how does, I say I'm a very fear, fearful person. How does my fear serve me? Well, I guess it keeps me safe. Mm-hmm. You know, how does disgust save me? Well, it keeps me from getting in relationships with people that I don't feel comfortable around. So all of these things, like even though we might try to make them go away, they're surface in a way. So the things we keep in our shadow, we can sometimes look at them. And if we can figure out how to embrace those things, they become less disgusting to us and we can embrace them. Absolutely. Um, 100%. So let's, let's go into the next one because we could spend so much time talking about this one film alone. Ratatouille. Uh, we there's a special place. We love food. Uh, we love cooking in in the Kerwin household. So this one has a bit of a special place. But let me just kind of set the context for like Ratatouille. By the way, I had to double check the spelling of this word multiple times because my instinct is not how to, that's not how to spell Ratatouille. Yeah, good but, job. Yeah, thank you. Google helped me. <laughs> uh, not the speller in the house. The speller in the house. Uh, yeah. You're my you're my word my word nerd. Um, mm-hmm. The this is a film just for setting context. This is a story about a group of rats. I think it's where they started. In, I think they're in Paris. Yeah, they're in Paris. Yeah. They're in the city of Paris, and they live in the slums. And they're they're fighting for scraps. And they've they re- eat garbage. They eat garbage. Yeah. And yeah, they resolved <laughs> in themselves. Here's the thing that they've and this is interesting. It's kind of maybe giving away too much about the lesson here, but they've 
convinced themselves in their mind, this is all we deserve. This is all we can get. Is We're rats. Scraps. This is what we do. This is, yeah, this is our identity as rats. We mm -hmm. only ever get the scraps. And then here's the interesting thing. This is the part that really gets me. When anyone within that tribe tried to break that social contract of this is our limit, this is how we think, and the person thought outside the box, they weren't met with joy. They just provided the keys to the kingdom that takes them to a whole new level. This person was met with skepticism. This person was met with resistance. Oh, what are you, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Breaking the wall? Breaking the construct? Breaking the limiting belief? Oh, we got to fix you and get you back into our way of thinking. And isn't, doesn't that happen? If you ever tried to go after a big goal or a big dream, and I'm not pointing any fingers at, but there's usually someone in your life who will come from a place of love and say, I'm not pointing at you, by the way, who comes from a place of love that's like, I don't know, maybe that's too big for you, or maybe you should drop it down a couple notches. Are you sure you want to do that? That doesn't sound very safe. They're going to try to oh, reel sure. you back in a little bit. Even your, even your like professional advisors will maybe give you that advice, like your school counselor yeah. might be like, mm, no, that sounds a little, you know, let's think about a little more realistic let's about what's that down a little bit. for you. That's super sad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so this, this is the context of this film and this rat loves food and has this new idea and watches this beautiful voice. And, and by the way, this is another thing I want to point out real quick. One of the major characters, one of my favorite characters in this film is actually the chef who speaks to him in his mind, right? And he always says, he's always hearing these messages, you can do it, you can do anything, anyone can be a chef. And he hears this new philosophy. And this new philosophy, as the more he listens to it, the more it enters his subconscious mind and the more it becomes his voice. And then he starts telling himself and the people, you can do it, you can do it. I find that so beautiful about this movie Ratatouille, that that message is there. And I can, I can think of so many people in my life who have been that person for me, who at a time when I needed to hear it most came along and said, Patrick, you can do it. I believe in you. You can do anything you set your mind to. Um, those people include my parents, my friends. So um, thank you to everyone who believed in me enough to say, hey, doesn't matter where you came from, you can do this thing, which actually brings me to the major lesson of Ratatouille, which I absolutely love. Drum roll. Don't let your history dictate your future. It doesn't matter where you come from. Your your backstory, the things that happen to you do not define you. What defines you is the bold action you take today. So maybe you needed to hear that. Uh, maybe you disagree with that. Maybe you're like, no, we got to remember all the terrible stuff that happened to us or whatever. But let us know in the comments below if you think we're full of crap. Let us know if we missed any of the major lessons that you love from these films we've covered so far. Um, any of your thoughts on Ratatouille before we move on to the next Love one? Love the movie. Love it. No. Is, was it a, a super popular one? I don't think it got the credit that it no, needed. No. I don't think it so did. It's so good. I think I might watch it. Watch it. Go back and watch today. it. Today. Go back and watch it. I can watch it today. All right. That was number three. Oh, number four. Finding Nemo. Oh, my God. We've watched this so many times. So many times. When it came out, we watched it. And that was, what, like 15 years ago? I think yes. we watched it even before we had kids. And then William was born. And then we watched it five million times. Yes. And now it's back on. And now it's back on and, all over again. Um, of course, can I just say the favorite line is, don't touch the butt. <laughs> 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 Whenever that line can be pulled out in my house, it's pulled out. With giggles. With don't giggles. touch the butt. Don't touch the butt. Um... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, what, what else were my, you saying? I'm like, it's like you just gave me like a, it's like a, to, you just tossed a joke at me. And I was like, ooh, I'm, ooh I got to run with this one. Uh, but I'm going to resist. It's a family show after all. Family show. Family show. Um, so if you, if you never, God, if you haven't seen Finding Nemo, I'm just going to wonder what's wrong with you at this point. But if you haven't seen it, again, this is a great opportunity to go watch it again or rewatch it. Setting context. Um, ocean. We're in the ocean and there's fish. Welcome to it. It's the coral reef and there's these uh, two major characters, Marlin the dad and Nemo the fish. At this point, I'm not gonna reveal, due to potential spoilers, what happened to mom, but we'll come back to that. So Typical Disney typical Disney stuff. So every day they go in and out, and in and out of the sea and the anemone. Mm -hmm. That's a joke for the movie if you don't know why I said it that way. And the father uh, Marlin is very concerned and scared for his son and it turns out turns out plot twist 
the fear that Marlin is parenting with is not so much a concern from Nemo as a deep fear he holds in himself. Ba ba bum. So then a lot of the film is the characters navigating their fear, navigating what they think is possible, and pushing into the vast, deep, sometimes dark, unknown. And that's really the, the main setting for this movie. So mm -hmm. and never giving up and just showing courage. Yes. No matter who you are. Marlin shows courage mm -hmm. and Dory shows courage and so does Nemo. Mm -hmm. They all are very courageous and they're all very scared too, like scared in their own way. Yes. Nemo because he's a kid and Marlin because he has all these, you know, deep seated neurotic fears. And Dory because she can't remember anything. <laughs> can't remember anything. So, so yeah, all the characters have that thing in common. Yeah. And I, I want to pull out something you said that I thought was really, really important. You said each character in Finding Nemo shows courage. But you also said in the same breath that each of them is deeply afraid. So let's unpack that a little bit because how can you possibly be terribly afraid and still have courage? What, what are your thoughts on that one? Hmm. Riddle me this. Well... I think courage and bravery requires mm. some fear, right? So, because if you don't care about, if mm -hmm. you don't care about anything, you're not afraid, and then just do something. You're really not showing bravery or courage. So, mm -hmm. it's when you're afraid that you can show bravery and courage, which is yeah. kind of cool. It's a good lesson for kids. Yeah, I think so you're too. You're scared now. You can be brave. Now you can exercise courage and bravery mm -hmm. all right so let's come down to it maybe you, maybe you have already figured this out what is the major life lesson from finding Nemo it's you heard it actually in the film they actually say it out loud from Dory just keep swimming when you're going through your darkest days when you're going through your darkest challenges when you feel like giving up because fear has gripped you or you've done you failed in something the major lesson here is just keep swimming, keep mm -hmm. moving forward. Because as the, as you move through fear, as Katie, you said so perfectly, that's where courage is developed. Fear is the arena in which courage has a chance to show up. So if you're feeling afraid right now, that's a good thing. That means you're about to do something really, really brave. Mm -hmm. So keep keep at it. Man, I'm talking about all these feelings. Whew. Disney, I'm, I'm getting all emotional. Speaking of emotional, um, this next one, it has taken over our house at this particular point. Oh, yes. um, oh, that and one more, which we'll reveal later. So these are our top five. Again, hang out to the end. We've got three bonus ones we're going to be going over. But if you have no idea what this is, this is the incredible, beautiful, stunningly created, and everything about it, art style, everything, Moana. Mm -hmm. Moana is a story about a uh, family living in Hawaii and kind of the origin back in the day of navigating. It really touches on the soul and spirit of human beings as explorers, mm -hmm. human beings as going into the great unknown. And it's just, it really taps into me what the spirit of being human is really all about. And in the film, you have a group of people as a result of fear. God, fear is a that word. Wow. That word, keep, that word mm, keeps coming out today. Theme. Themes. Uh, you have this group of people in the film Moana who, again, their, their nature is explorers. Their true heart is that of an explorer. But what fear has done is it has caged them. It has kept them tight on their little island and never, ever leaving the safe comfort zone of where they live and and there's one character Moana who dares to leave the comfort zone and every time she's kind of re-wrangled back in and be like no 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 be here be here with with us don't leave and but her spirit calls her to something bigger and bolder and that's really the essence or the marrow of this film so before we go into the big reveal and the lessons, any thoughts on comfort zones and anything? By the way, if you guys have any thoughts or if we have missed anything, like what what have we missed? What film have we're not talking about today that you believe deserves some airtime and some lessons? Let us know in the comments below. Well, what's kind of cool is that <clears throat> we're we're sort of telling the same story over and over again. Oh, human stories! How funny how yes, that works. So, yeah. And people love these stories. Grown ups too. But kids, kids for lots of reasons, but grownups because they, they're they about a hero. And mm -hmm. we lo we want to be the hero in our own lives, I Ooh, think. Oh, yes. And sometimes we feel like we're too afraid or we don't 
have the skills or whatever, but we want to be the hero so bad. Yes. And that's why I like these stories. So it's very interesting. It's all about a person, a seemingly ordinary person who's just going along, living life mm -hmm. be, uh, within their restrained little bubble. It's very safe there. Mm -hmm. And then something happens where they need to test their bravery and test their courage to go and save the day. And isn't that like what we want to do in our lives all the time? Yeah, that that is the fundamental human story. So if there's anything that before we even get further into Moana, if there's anything we want to make sure that you're hearing us loud and clear, my friends, today, Katie and I are leaning deep into this because we want you to hear it from us. And if, if we're the fifth person to tell you, maybe you needed five. You heard it from four other people. You just needed one more, like the, like the numbers on a lock. You just need that one extra number to get unlocked. Here, we're going to give it to you one more time today. You are a human in living your human story and you are the author of that story. And as you write the next chapter of whatever you feel is next for you, and if you feel scared, we all feel scared. We all feel that constraint. And every great story in history, and of course all the films we're talking about today, touch on that we all go through that thing, but it's what we develop in the process of going after it that's the most important. Mm -hmm. That's who we become. And if we let fear hold us back forever, just indefinitely, man, that sucks. Yeah. You know, take a take the bold step through fear. And I think we would all find if we did it all the time, um, everything's going to be okay. Like it's fear is just a, that's just a thought. I mean, yeah. we're not talking about swing, swimming with sharks or actually I'm anything, not doing that. anything <laughs> dangerous. That's okay. <laughs> but if it's like, what's my next, my next bold step going to be? And fear is the thing that's holding you back. Just, mm, just be brave and push through it. Because imagine what's on the other side. Like, like you always say, mm -hmm. if you're feeling afraid, it's because something's on the other side. Yeah, calling and you. It's, so if you can push through that fear, and if you practice doing it over and over again, you keep learning. Oh, I can do it. I can, I can push through the fear, and I can actually get whatever I want. That's kind of cool. I think so. All right, so let's do the Moana reveal. Uh, this is personally one of my favorite films. I mean, I talk about this one a lot. Anyone who's been on a coaching call with me, I probably mentioned Moana once at least one time. <laughs> Become who you really are. This whole film has major characters who have lost who they are. They've lost the heart of who they really are. And let me just give you the quick rundown if you haven't thought of it this way. Um, Moana obviously is a character is struggling with her ability and her own strength to be the explorer and the navigator that she is and she's lost that sense and her didn't have the support of family but she learned to find her courage you have Maui who keeps saying things like I don't have my hook you know I'm not Maui without my hook mm -hmm. and so he has to learn that he's incredible even without his hook and so everyone's lost something. And then Tefiti, the main character, has lost her heart and she's turned dark as a result. So it seems like we have this theory or this theme that we need to have our heart connected to our heart of who we really are. And that's the key to mm -hmm. living an extraordinary life. And even more, I'm, I'm going to butcher this a little bit so you can step in and save me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Moana learns that she has everything she needs within herself. So she starts the story. Mm -hmm. She needs Maui. She's like, I need to find Maui. Yes. And she tells him, you will board my boat mm -hmm. and do this, you know. Sail and, across and the great sea and restore to the heart of Tefiti. There you go. I saved you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> and then later in the story, her language changes. Mm. And so, Patrick, take yeah, it away. So, so, Talk about this. So <laughs> that's good. That's the, every story has a transformation moment. And in the story, again, Moana, this incredible woman, this incredible girl, is looking at her life and she thinks she needs something else or someone else to help her get to that next level. And what she realizes at the end, when everything is at its highest stake, and that she needs to believe in herself. And then what she says to herself, instead of saying, I'm going to go get Maui and Maui's going to save us and he, she's going to restore the heart, she says, I am Moana of Montanui. And aboard my boat, I will sail across the great sea. 
and restore the heart of Tefiti, and then she does. Mm. Ooh, chill story. I got chills story. In my head. Story chills. I love. I'm such a sucker for good story. Maybe <laughs> you're, maybe so your story nerd yeah, like me. I know. We're probably like people are like, what the heck are they? Why doing? are they so excited Disney. about Disney films? We're so excited. You should do it in real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now, okay, we've done our top five. Now we're on to our bonus. I don't think we could talk about this in, in the Kerwin household without the film mm. that we are now watching a bajillion times every single day, and that is Frozen. I'm going to go Frozen 1. I think I like Frozen 1 a For little sure. more than Frozen 2. Sorry, but yes. Um, but we're going to do these a little rapid fire because we can see that we're getting a little, a little late into things. So bonus number four, or number six on the list of past our top five. Thanks for hanging with us for the bonus ones is Frozen. This is a, all a story about family, about these two, the whole, really, it's about these two sisters and their love for each other. And Elsa's power uh, is ice. And she's worn multiple times from different people. Like, beware, beware, because your power is beautiful, but it could be used for dark purposes. And the, uh, the warning in the beginning is beware the frozen heart. Mm. And then she goes to this whole film not knowing how to solve the fact that everything she turns turns to crap. And then she becomes, right, she, she becomes cold inside. You know, we go through things in life, we, whether it's building walls or building, uh, getting frozen on the inside, she freezes her own heart in, a, in essence. But really when it comes down to at the end, again, we're, this is basically a super spoiler, Bill. I'm so sorry, but we're just going to jump into it. I should have done a warning at the beginning. The lesson of Frozen, the great story. It's actually, funny enough, all Disney films give away the lesson with a piece of dialogue. And here is what it is. Love thaws a frozen heart. Actually spoken by Olaf. He's the one who extracted that. Dory said, keep swimming, just keep swimming. And Olaf said, oh, love. Throw, fly, f- f- th- oh, I can't say it. What Lo- say? Love <laughs> thaws a frozen heart. I'm going enunciate with my tongue a little bit better. <laughs> That's um, Frozen. Such an incredible, incredible film. It's great. Uh, and also to hear our daughter sing at the top of her lungs and just. <laughs> in the yard. In the yard, at, in the car. On a walk, singing. Let it go. Just let it go. I By the way, it's also that girl, could be the little little children, girls and boys, even. I know. Wanted. Let it go. What are you letting go of? Your fear. Boom! Yeah. Right there. <laughs> All right. Let's get back into this number seven and our bonus ones. Uh, again, another one that doesn't get a lot of play. I really liked this one. Uh, this one's Big Hero Six, and if you've never seen Big Hero Six, the context is it's built in a, uh, a, a fantasy land called San Fran Tokyo. Fran- San-, San Fran Tokyo. Something like that. It's like yeah. it's like the alternate uh, Japanese San Francisco of the future. And this one for me, for entrepreneurs, is really really important. Or any sort of creatives who are building their life. The lesson of this one is you have these kids who are trying to. Um, they're smart kids and are trying to solve major problems and they get so stuck in the problem. And that's one of the things that we want to focus on today. Like, are you in a problem right now? Are you so focused on the problem that you just can't see the solution? You're so stuck in that place. One of the things we've learned from this movie, Big Hero 6, is the following lesson. And I'll just reveal it right now. Sometimes what you need to do is you need to look for a new angle. And that's one of the major things that happened in the film is that the brother... I'm not going to say what happens to the brother, but the brother teaches his younger brother, the older brother, he shakes him literally upside down. He says, you, you're you going to figure it out. Just look at it from a new angle. And he's literally looking at the world upside down from a different angle. And then the idea pops in his head. He goes, I know the solution now. And that's sometimes what we need to do. So if you're in a place like that where you're just like, I just can't see through this. I can't see around it. I can't figure what to do. Change your angle. Go for a walk. Change your environment. Just try to see it from a new space or a new place in your mind, in your mental state, and somehow the problem seems to come out. Last on our list, our final bonus one. What I mean, what would be? This is a good one. Well, how could we even Everybody talk about these? The one. movie. Up. Oh, I talk about a tearjerker. Don't watch without tissues. This is one of those kinds of films, especially if you're married and you have someone in your life that you love a lot. Uh, this one will get you in all the feels. Um, so many things I could say about this film, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to say, be, I mean, gosh, beautiful story of a endless romance and the thing that happens to the main character, and I don't know if I can, we can't go into this about spoilers, the thing that happens to the main character is he loses the love of his life and he feels at that moment that his life is completely over. Mm-hmm. Done. Good point. So this is a story of uh, many characters finding their way to a new adventure. Something just dropped. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hold 
Hope it wasn't a phone or something. Part um, of my pen. Part of your pen. <laughs> it's too busy playing with Why the pen. Why do you have a pen? Uh, so really, the the lesson comes down to this, and we'll just close here. Uh, the main character is looking over literally the story of his life, mm-hmm. like an actual book of the pictures of his life, and it, and his wife leaves him a, a, a lesson a, again. Usually, if you're looking for the major lesson for Disney Pixar films, one of the characters gives it away. In this case, the wife writes a note in his book that gives him the major lesson of what Up is about, and it's this exact phrase. It's never too late to start a new adventure. She tells him in the book, now go have your next adventure, right? And you've got a lot of life live. So if you are in a place right now where you've maybe experienced some things, gone through some things, and you feel like you're kind of stuck in that chapter of your life, or if you're just you moving into a brand new phase, a new season, a new chapter, that's the beautiful thing about seasons. What always comes after summer? Fall. What always comes after winter? Spring. That's the one thing we all know about the changing season. As our life changes, the seasons of our life change, it gives us a brand new opportunity to start a brand new adventure. And I think it's something to be excited about. So that's the the major lessons from all these films. Again, if you're if you're liking this content and you want to see more, make sure to hit that like button. Let us know. Give us a little feedback. We love a little thumbs up. Subscribe to us on the channel and make sure to hit that bell if you're watching YouTube to make sure you'll get notified every time we go live. Every Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern. Sorry, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. All right, guys. Well, Listen, thanks so much for being here for another episode of the Pursuit Sunday Sit-Down Edition. And until we see you again, may the fire within lead the happiest heights. And the road you travel be lined with lights. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.